Hey everyone, it's Siobhan here. Today is October 1st, so I decided that I was going to do a video today and it is going to be my September favorites. I just kind of wanted to get it out of the way before I forgot to do it and uh, then had to double up like I did for summer. I did July and August together and that was just like really, really super long. So um, actually a lot of things happened in September and this video will probably end up being just as long. So my apologies in advance, but um, yeah. <laughs> In September, some of my favorites are just like anniversary dates and birthdays. Um, there are a lot of birthdays of people who are important to me in September. So Dana, Sabrina, Ashley, Emily, and of course my brother. Um, it's also my wedding anniversary, which is September 6th, so that's kind of a big one. We were married six years. And another one is 9-11, of course, really big one. I did not go downtown this year on the anniversary date, I just didn't really feel like it. But um, it's just one of those kind of sad days and yeah, I don't really want to talk about it that much. I didn't actually buy very many beauty products um, this month at all, but um, I do have three little things here and I'll show them to you. The first two are nail polishes. This brand is called Essie. And here in New York City, if you go into any like nail salon at all, you're going to see this brand. And they're kind of expensive, I'd say they're about $8 a bottle, um, but it's literally one of the best polishes that I have ever used, ever. Um, so I got two colors. I started off with only one in my hand, it's this pink one, it's called Good Morning Hope. And the reason I got it, um, it supports breast cancer, because I believe, uh, is it this month, breast cancer awareness? I'm not 100% on that, but um, yeah. I thought, oh, that's cool, so I bought that one, and it's pretty. Very sheer, but pretty. And then this one is called uh, Penny Talk, and it's just like a gold metallic, and usually I like things that are matte. I don't really like anything that's super shiny or glittery, but um, I did like that one a lot. In terms of hair, the only thing I bought um, was Tresemme Nourishing Rituals. Um, it's a, it says Cashmere Touch Hydrating Serum. And I really like this a lot. You just put like a few little pumps in your hand and then you rub it into your hair and it does in fact make it feel softer. Or at least that's been my experience with it. So I like this a lot. It's just a few dollars, not really a big deal. I think I might have mentioned that I am a jewelmint.com junkie and this month I bought two things because I had an extra credit and I also had like sale coupons. Um, and what I got was, well, this ring is really fantastic and I don't really remember what it's called but I'll try and find the link it's just huge and they kind of look like little hibiscus flowers I wanted it I wanted it to fit on my middle finger but it kind of just comes to the knuckle and then like won't push down the rest of the way on my finger um, and the other thing that I got and this is this is what I got for free whoa this is what I got for free but um I had a these were discounted. They were on sale and then I had a coupon. Um, they're just little earrings. They're like calla lilies, I think. And there's like a little pearl kind of stone in the center. I've been wearing these pretty much every single day. I just really like them a lot. I will take pictures so you guys can see what they look like up close. In terms of TV um, this month, <laughs> I've been watching Boardwalk Empire and I loved the second season. The first season was okay. And so far, I can't really say anything bad about the third season. Um, I'm just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. It's sort of like the setup so far, so it's not like, you know, totally got me, but whatever. I'm going to stick with it and see how it goes. And um, the other thing that I'm watching, I am watching on Netflix. It is Once Upon a Time. And I started to DVR those episodes when it first premiered. but. Um, then I forgot to and I just didn't keep up with the show so I think I might have seen like two episodes and that was it and of course I searched online for links and stuff and I couldn't find anything that you didn't have to not like download so I just didn't trust that and it's finally on Netflix the first season and of course it premiered yesterday on Sunday and when I woke up on Sunday morning I was like I'm DVRing it right now and I forgot to so I missed recording the first episode of the second season so I'm going to try and find that online and remember to record the rest of them at least. 
Um, but yeah, just my luck. That's what I did with American Horror Show too. Um, I was listening to everyone on Facebook talk about it and I knew that it was coming up and I just forgot to record it. So yeah, um, those are the only two shows that I'm watching kind of this month. So another thing that happens in September, I forgot to include it with the like anniversaries and dates, is the San Gennaro Festival in Little Italy. Um, it is so fun, but so crowded and crazy. Uh, I don't really know much about like the history of San Gennaro Festival in New York. Um, I don't really know when it started, and I'm not very familiar with the saint that is celebrated either. <laughs> I just know it as the festival in Little Italy that is really fun. Um, we went and we ended up having Italian food. It is so, so packed on the weekends. We really should have just kind of gone during the week. But um, yeah, I think it, it lasts for most of the end of September. So it's like almost two weeks. And it was just a lot of fun. So I'm just gonna make mention of that. We played all sorts of games, um, spaghetti, cannolis, and uh, you know, those like little circle ride things that they have for kids. We did that with Finn. Um, I'm not sure if I have any pictures, but if I do, I'll put some somewhere. <laughs> I also discovered on our way to the San Gennaro Festival this little sort of cupcake shop in the West Village called Molly's Cupcakes, and that's where I'm from. I'm from the West Village, and it's funny because it's constantly changing. So many of the stores and like restaurants that I remember as a kid are not really there anymore. And anyway, this little place, it's kind of... It's like right off Bleecker Street, um, literally almost across the street from Our Lady of Pompeii School and Church, and uh, near Carmine Street, I guess. Anyway, this is the best cupcake you could have or wish for, and the bar, I'm gonna post pictures because it's so cool, the bar has these swing seats. I mean, they're like literally swings that hang from the ceiling, and you can sit on them while you're drinking like an espresso and having a cupcake. It is the coolest thing ever. Um, so if you're in the New York area, I will write down like the address and the name of this little cupcake place and put it in the information bar below because I think it is so cute and it is perfect for any and all tourists <laughs> to take really um, fun pictures in. I think it might have been the second weekend of September. We were just out calvanting, walking around, and we came across a street fair, um, which is um, something that happens a lot at the end of the summer, also sort of the beginning of September here in New York. And we found um, this really cool street vendor who makes tiles, like um, New York City kind of inspired tiles. And we got two of them. And I just wanted to share because I'd never seen anything like so cool. I don't know how he did this. Um, he started to try and explain the process, and of course he had like really big sized ones and like tiny little ones. But um, I have a... I love tiles, like any kind of colored or pictured or painted tile, I, I love them. And what I kind of do is I put them like behind the sink, sort of, <laughs> in my kitchen. Because um, I hate cooking, I absolutely hate to cook. So I try and distract myself with everything I possibly can. My husband actually put a TV in the kitchen for me and um, I have also been known to take my laptop and watch Netflix while I'm making dinner and um, any and all like little decorative things like this like this really helps um, kind of keep my eye focused on not cooking. <laughs> I hate cooking so much oh my god. Um, and unfortunately it's like kind of one of those chores that most of the time falls onto me. But um, as you can see, this one is the Bleecker Street sign. <laughs> and of course I grew up not very far from Bleecker Street and that's the street that I walked to school on. And um, yeah, it's just a very important street to me, to my family, to my family history, like it's just, yeah. And then this one is... Um, was taken in the subway, obviously, and it's the 456 train. And then the reason we picked this one is because of the little penguins. And um, I don't remember seeing this in any train station at all. I've never noticed the penguins. And I'm not really sure what station this is, because <laughs> it doesn't say. But um, the 6 train is the train that we currently use the most. Um, so it's kind of like our train right now. 
in September I got two new uh, DVDs. Um, we went into Best Buy one evening and I found two things that I thought were going to be really cool. I actually haven't watched either of them yet, but um, the first one, I'm sure many of you long-haired ladies have probably heard of it and or watched it already, Hatfields and McCoys. I wanted to see this when it was on TV, and again, I forgot to DVR. So I didn't get to watch it, <laughs> and when I saw that it was already out on DVD in Best Buy, I was like, you know what, I'm probably going to love this, so it's not like I'm wasting my money. You know, I usually like to kind of rent things or watch things on Netflix, but um, yeah, I figured I wouldn't regret getting this because I heard only good things about it. And then the other one, I just had to get it because it was so cheap. It was so cheap. Um, it's History Channel stuff, um, Ancient Rome, and there are, as you can see, nine documentaries in, in here. So there's like five DVDs, nine documentaries, and it was $15. So I was thinking of I mean, I'm going to watch this and enjoy this myself, but like, this is probably going to end up being an excellent reference for Fanula when she's in school, so I thought, hey, I'll pay 15 bucks for that. Last thing we got out of um, Best Buy that day, and I actually didn't know that Garrett had purchased it until we left the store, was this. Um, <laughs> it's uh, for PlayStation 3 Game of Thrones, and I actually had no idea that this even existed. Um, I'm not really a gamer at all. I think the only video game that I have ever obsessively played is probably Guitar Hero. Um, I don't particularly have the best eye-hand coordination with the remote control, and I don't have the best patience with it either. Um, so I'm not really sure how this is going to go over for me. I mean, I'll give it a shot and I'll definitely uh, tell you guys about it in maybe a future video or something. How I did with it, but um, he seemed to like it. He played it not too long ago and thought that it was really cool. For my younger brother's birthday, I decided to get him some new books because he is actually going to be traveling to Istanbul and to Greece at the end of October, and I figure, you know, you're on the plane, you need something to do, you can only watch movies for so long before going insane. Um, so I got him a copy of a book called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime because the two main characters are Christopher and Siobhan, and it is also very kooky and funny and weird and bizarre. I will put a link to it if you're interested in checking it out. Um, it's, it's a funny story, very strange, but cool. And then I got him a fresh copy of like all the Greek and Roman myths, and he hadn't had a nice one in a while, and I think the last one, I then I got him a King Arthur one, because when he was little, he really liked the whole King Arthur thing. So that, that's when I got him. And that day I was also kind of wandering around looking for a new book for myself, even though I haven't read The Last Temptation of Christ, which is the book that I've been meaning to sit down and read. I don't know what is stopping me. I guess I'm just looking for a place to hole up and I just haven't found one yet. But um, in the meantime, I found this book and it says New York Times bestseller. So sounds good to me. It's called The Song of Achilles, and the author, well, the cover kind of caught my attention, because look at it. I mean, it's cool. And the author, she has a bachelor's and master degree in Latin and Ancient Greek from Brown University, and this is her first story. So this seems pretty freaking cool, and it's, I mean, the print's not very big. This is going to be an easy read. So I will again probably mention this in another video once I have actually read this. <laughs> and uh, somehow or another though, I like to only go into Barnes and Nobles <coughs> once a month, but um, I ended up going twice because my husband wanted to go in and we had our little sister, or I had my little sister-in-law with me and I think she wanted to go in. So I just kind of waited for them to like look at things. And when we came out of the store, Garrett was like, here, I got something for you. And I thought it was really cool. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> like, it's so random, right? Um, you know how I feel about Harry Potter. Everybody knows how I feel about Harry Potter. So uh, it's kind of appropriate. It's got this little peg so it like sits. But I kind of want to hang it on the wall. And it's just, it's really funny. 
So I think that it's probably one of my favorites. <laughs> In September, I went to my first Renaissance fair ever. Um, I'd never actually been to one before, um, of this size at least. And it was super, super fun. I went with my husband and my daughter, and my girlfriend, her boyfriend, and his brother. It was in Tuxedo Park, New York, which in a car wasn't that far from Manhattan. And uh, unfortunately, none of us had costumes to go around, but like the next time, we definitely will. And um, I took so many pictures, most of which are going to be on Facebook. I might put a few maybe in the underbar or in between clips in this video or something just so you can see. It is amazing. I mean the fairgrounds are huge so there is plenty of space for everyone. I mean there's like a little zoo and then there's all these like shops with homemade wares and everybody's in a costume like the people that work there and then people that are attending the fair. There is musicians. Um, the food is really funny too. I mean because they serve these huge turkey legs and um, like soup in a bread bowl, <laughs> which is pretty pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it was a really warm sunny day. We had a great time and uh, we came back with a few goodies. I'm going to show you because I just think they're so beautiful. Um, and they're handmade, which is like amazing. <laughs> in fact, I think I was pretty impressed by most of um, the vendors that I saw because everything, I guess, to go along with the theme of Renaissance or a medieval um, life, it was kind of just like all handmade clothing and jewelry and toys. And of course, my husband knows how I feel about jewelry. I'm always collecting um, jewelry, kind of. And he got me this. And I thought it was so cool. And actually, this is going to be um, something I wear for Halloween. Um, and it's neat because it's a pin, so I can take it off the necklace and I can wear it just as a pin. But, uh, it's very cool. <laughs> I thought it was neat. Oh, sorry, that's my phone going ding. Um, oh, yeah, I gotta show you this. I know it's a little ridiculous that I am showing my daughter's wooden sword to you guys, but, um, I cannot believe the craftsmanship. <laughs> it's amazing. This cost us $20, and it is, like, solid wood. It's heavy, super heavy. I mean, like, when she's playing with this, you have to get out of the way. But, um, yeah, I just needed to show that off because there were so many like this all over the fair. They had, like, the little toy guns, the little knives. They had these huge spears, various, um, varying kinds of swords. Um, this was Fanula-sized, so, yeah, I just had to show you because it was amazing. I don't think I'd ever seen, like, sort of such nice craftsmanship, um, yeah, anyway. Um, and the other thing, of course, that all of us girls got while we were there, and these are really pretty, and I'm sure that anybody who's gone to a Renaissance fair has something like this, is one of the, the hair wreaths. And uh, these are false flowers, these little white ones, but these are all real. And according to the girl that sold them to us, these can last for years if you take nice care of them, which is very cool to know. This is something that I'm probably going to wear for Halloween as well. and. Um, this is my, that one's mine, and this one is Fanula's. Of course, she picked the big purple flowers. So I thought that was, I thought they were really cool. And then, of course, my friend Emily, she got one too. But yeah, I wanted to share it. They don't look like they're that hard to make, actually. Um, you definitely, I mean, if you look closely, you can see that they're just bunches of dried flowers, and then there's this twine that's like wrapping them around this wire. In fact, when I was a little girl, my mom, for special occasions, because these are so pretty, um, she made little ones with like little tiny flowers on them, like mostly like those little pink kind of false roses. For whatever reason, she favored that kind of a flower. But um, she'd make them for my spring or winter recitals at school or, you know, some sort of special occasion. And I had so many of them for a long time and then we moved and I just don't know where they went. So it's kind of sad, but exciting that we've got two pretty new ones, and there's a nail in our kitchen, so I've just been kind of hanging them up like that, because I don't know what to do with them. And the cutest thing that we got... <laughs> Look! <laughs> this is Rapunzel, and she is six months old, and she doesn't like being picked up right now, because she wants to crawl on everything. But yes, this is a little hamster. 
and she's just so cute. Ooh, ooh, don't fall, don't fall. All right, I'm gonna put her back in her tank, but I wanted to show her off. <laughs>